Steve from South Bay Motor Performance. Today we're going to show you how to remove the throttle body from this 2021 KTM 300 XCW and how to install the idle screw modification. First thing we're going to do is remove the seat, the fuel tank, and the rear muffler. We can leave the header pipe on the bike uh, and I'll show you what happens next. Okay, next we're going to use a six millimeter socket to loosen the rear boot from the throttle body. Leave the front boot that attaches to the reed cage tight. Just loosen the uh, hose clamp on the rear boot all, of the, all the way. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a Torx head and we're gonna remove the lower subframe mounts and loosen the upper subframe mounts. We're gonna rotate the entire subframe up and off the throttle body and once I get it in an up position I will tighten the upper subframe mounts so that it stays in that up position. Okay on the left side I had to remove the airbox cover so I can get to the upper subframe mount and again I'm just loosening that I'm not taking it all the way out. And on the right side we need to remove this frame guard because it is attached to this side plate. So we got a six millimeter bolt here, and then I'm gonna snip the zip tie here, the zip tie here, remove this frame guard, loosen this mount here. I've already removed this mount there, and the whole subframe will tilt up. Okay, everything's now loosened and been removed, and we're ready to rotate the subframe up and off the throttle body. There is a lip on the boot that goes on the throttle body, which makes it a little difficult to get off. So I like to very carefully put a flat blade screwdriver in there and just kind of help uh, not to pry, but just kind of break that seal to help get that boot off the back of the throttle body. Now that we've got the subframe rotated up and only the top bolts tightened, it's out of our way and off the throttle body. Now we need to remove a few parts to get the throttle body out. So I'm gonna remove this cover here. And after I get this cover off, we got to disconnect the electrical. Uh, and so on the electrical, there's a white tab back here that needs to pull backwards. It's a locking tab. So this white tab, you have to pull back towards the back of the bike or back towards the back tire. So you hear it click. And then once it clicks, you can then remove this electrical. Okay, so I've got the electrical connector out just to show you. This is that back clip. So this will be pushed in. You wanna pull this back clip out and then this whole thing will come out and that's what it looks like. Now we're gonna remove the oil hose that comes from the oil pump to the throttle body. And then we'll go on the other side and remove the throttle cables. Okay, now that I'm on this side of the bike and I need to get the throttle cables off, I've just decided it's gonna be a lot easier to remove the pipe. So I'm gonna remove the pipe. There's a Torx and I'm gonna remove that Torx and there's a plastic cover that I'll remove and then I can get to the throttle cables and we'll remove the throttle cables. Okay, so you can see this is the uh, oil hose that's going to the throttle body. There's a little pinch hose clamp there. I'm gonna remove that, carefully remove this hose and then I'm gonna take that Torx out and carefully remove this cover so I can get these throttle cables out. Okay, so I've got the torque screw out of here and I just wanted to show you guys, this cover could be a little tricky and it's kind of thin plastic, you don't wanna break it. So just carefully put a little screwdriver in here and just kind of carefully pry it open. And then on the back side down here in the bottom, there's a little tab. Be careful you don't pry that too much. You wanna just get that so that it unlocks and then the whole cover will come off. Okay, now we got the cover off. I'm gonna take this boot, this boot, move them up. It's a 10 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna loosen the nuts and the throttle cables will come off of the throttle housing mechanism. Okay, now that we've got everything disconnected from the throttle body, the last thing I'm gonna do is remove this six millimeter hose clamp on the front of the throttle body that goes into the brute, that goes into the reed cage. Get it nice and loose. And then we're gonna remove the throttle body from the motor.
Okay, so this is the throttle body and our goal is to get this set screw out. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna measure the gap in here because that's what's holding the throttle body from closing all the way. And that's how you're gonna set your idle. So we wanna take some calipers and measure the distance between that set block and the tab that opens. And it's typically, if I can get it in there right, about 4.4, .4, right there, about 4.5 millimeters. And the reason we wanna measure that and remember that is because when I remove this and put my TSP idle screw in, I wanna get it close to that same gap, okay? So in order to get this out, they have it set with some very severe strength Loctite. And so if we just try to pull it out, we're likely gonna strip that out. So we have to add heat to it to uh, melt that Loctite. Because this is plastic, we need to add heat to the backside here and then slowly turn this and keep adding heat until this comes out. You also wanna verify what type of head this is. All of the late models are two and a half millimeter Allens. So this tool works perfectly, but in some of the earlier TPI models, I've seen uh, Torx heads. So just verify, is it a Torx or an Allen? Get the right tool, add heat, be patient, and slowly get that screw out. Okay, so my setup here is I've got a, a water-soaked rag. Just because I'm dealing with heat, I like to put a little bit of wet rag here. I verified that my tool, which is a two and a half millimeter Allen, fits nice and snug all the way into that screw. And I've got my wrench here. So if you try, which I'm not even gonna put any pressure on it, it's very tight. And so we gotta heat this up. So I'm gonna put heat with my propane torch on the back side of here for 30 to 45 seconds. And I'm gonna slowly try to torque this and if it goes, I'm gonna keep going, but if I feel like I'm putting too much pressure on this, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna keep adding more heat until this thing backs out nice and easy. Okay, so I've added some heat. I got my tool in here and I can tell it's spinning and I'm not having to put too much pressure so that was only about 30 seconds of heat and it's coming all the way out nice and easy. So I'm just gonna keep rolling it until I get it out. Now this screw is gonna be very hot. The throttle body is very hot. So don't start grabbing it until things cool down. Let it cool down and then we'll install the idle screw. So there's what the idle screw looks like that we removed. And here's the adjustable two-stroke performance idle screw that we're gonna install. These are really nice. This is a stainless steel bolt with a stainless steel spring and it has a nice little knob that you can easily turn out in the field with your gloves on. So it's a really nice functioning idle screw. So the first thing I like to do is I like to try to run the idle screw in without the spring. And when I put it in here and start turning it, I can tell there's still some Loctite in there. So it gets, it's a little tight and I don't wanna just force it. So I'm going to use a little bit of brake clean. I'm going to throw some brake clean in there and I'm going to keep rotating this in there. And if it binds, I'm going to back it out a little bit, rotate a little further, back it out, rotate a little further until those threads clean up until this thing gets nice and neat. Uh, some guys actually run a, um, a tap through there to get all of that glue out of there. Not a great idea because you always end up taking away a little bit of the aluminum and then the threads get loose and then this thing could vibrate and back out some. So don't run a tap through it. Uh, just keep working some carb cleaner, maybe some compressed air and just keep working these threads back and forth until it gets in to where you can set that gap to that four and a half millimeters. Okay, now that I've got the screw to where the threads go in nice and easy where I'm comfortable with that, then I'm gonna back it out all the way and then I'm gonna add our stainless steel spring. I just, when I'm working on the threads, I don't want the string, I don't wanna be fighting the spring. I wanna get the threads in there nice and smooth. And then now that everything's nice and smooth, I got the spring in there 
and I'm gonna screw it in, set our four and a half millimeter gap. And then from there we have our cover. And if you could see when the cover goes on, there's there needs to be a, a notch here. So what I'm gonna show you, we're gonna drill this out and create a little notch so that it goes around the idle screw. And then we'll be ready to reinstall the throttle battery back onto the bike. Okay, so I've marked my cap on where I wanna drill the hole. And when drilling plastic, it can be a little easy. If you just take a big drill bit, a standard drill bit after that, it, you can crack it and break it. So what I like to do is I mark it. This is actually a drill bit designed specifically for plastic. You can see it's very pointy. Another trick is to uh, get a drill bit that you don't need anymore. The size of this is a 1964 and put it on a, a turning wheel, put it, the drill in reverse rotation and you can cut a drill bit to look a lot like this. It just wants a real pointy type uh, tip on there for cutting plastic. And then we also like to support the back side of it. So I have this piece of wood here and I'm gonna hold it right there and support the back side. And then the last little tip is I'm gonna put a little bit of hand soap or Dawn or palm olive or something on the tip of this that's gonna act as a little bit of lubrication so we get a nice clean cut in this plastic without cracking or breaking it. So I've lubricated it. We're just gonna go nice and slow with plastic. You don't need to go fast. Nice and slow, trying to keep it level. All the way down, once I start seeing wood, I know I'm all the way through. And there's our hole. Now we still have to cut the end out of that so that it wraps around the idle spring. So I've got these little snips here and what I'm gonna do is just try to line them up to make it look as best we can. I'm gonna snip there. I'm gonna come on the other side. I'm gonna snip there. And now we've got a nice looking slot that's gonna fit right over our idle screw and the cap is going to fit on perfectly and not interfere with the idle screw. All right, now we're ready to reinstall the throttle body with our idle screw installed on the bike. Uh, we're just gonna do that in the opposite direction that we uh, uninstalled it. So it's pretty, self, it's pretty easy, self-explanatory. One thing is uh, because we've disconnected the oil pump here, from the oil line, it is possible that we now have some air in there. So after you connect it back up and get it all back together, we suggest that you prime the oil pump. And there is a sequence on how to do that in your owner's manual using the uh, wake up dongle and, and the throttle. And just go ahead and prime that oil pump and that'll get any air that's out of that line um, before you start the bike. All right, so I've got the throttle body just placed into the front boot. It's not tight. I've installed the oil pump hose. And the next part is to loosen these top um, subframe mounts and swing the whole boot down and get the boot on the back of the throttle body. It can be a little bit tricky. So what I do is I just take a paper towel with a little bit of WD-40 Tri-Flow silicone spray. And I just put a little bit on the rim inside this boot here and that tends to help it slide on a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna clamp down both of the hose clamps and then reattach the throttle positioning sensor connector. I'm gonna reattach the uh, cables on the other side and uh, put the cover back on. All right, so now I got the uh, swing arm or subframe down. I got both boots on. Uh, to where I like them and before I do anything else I tighten the rear and the forward clamps on the boots and the throttle body nice and tight because we do not want to forget to do that because you'll suck dirt into your motor and it'll be a really bad day so I got both of those tight now the next thing I'm going to do is reinstall the connector for the throttle positioning sensor that pushes on so you hear a click and then don't forget about that locking tab on the back. Push it forward and that locks it in place. And then we can reinstall the cover. Now we've got the cover back on the throttle positioning sensor and I want to tighten up the subframe. So I'm going to install the lower bolts 
on both sides and get them nice and tight. And then I'm going to remember to tighten the upper ones that we had loosened previous so the subframe will be nice and tight, both lowers, both uppers. And now we're ready to install the throttle cables. And if you didn't mark them, it's pretty easy to figure out how to do it. I've got the throttle fully closed. When you open the throttle, one's gonna pull and the other's gonna push. So you'll see here, I open the throttle, the bottom one's pulling, the top one's pushing, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna install the top one that pushes first in the inside hole and then we want to install the one that pulls second in the outside hole. Now I've got the throttle cables installed and I'm just going to tighten up these 10 millimeters until they're nice and snug. And then we're going to reinstall the cap that we has our new cutout for the idle screw and put in the Torx nut and we'll be done with that. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys how to prime the oil pump to get any air bubbles that may have got in the line from us disconnecting the oil hose from the throttle body. So we need our wake up dongle and the procedure in the manual says to open the throttle wide open. And then I'm gonna plug the wake up dongle in and I'm gonna see that the bike is now woken up. And then when I release the throttle from full throttle, you should hear the oil pump prime and it'll prime for about 20 seconds and that'll be sufficient. So let's see if it works and we can hear it clicking. So we'll just let that run through its cycle. That's putting a little bit of oil into the system, getting out any oil bubbles, and then you're good to go, ready to start the bike. Okay, so we're all done with the throttle body, uh, idle screw modification. Everything's back and put together. Now we would just put the exhaust back on, the tank, the seat, and we go out and rip. For this particular bike, we are now gonna install the TSP power kit. If you're interested in seeing how that's done, I've got a video on my website for that. If you've got any questions at all, give us a call. We're happy to help. Thanks for watching South Bay Motor Performance.